And now, time for the news where you are. A special programme for Calendar, Granada Reports and Look Around with Christine Talbot and Tony Morris. Good evening and welcome to a special edition of your ITV regional news for Calendar Granada and Look Around. I'm Christine Talbot of Calendar and this is Tony Morris from Granada Reports and we're coming to you live across three regions as we join together to examine why the North's main train provider has failed the people it serves so badly. Now tonight we are in Preston, one of the worst affected stations. For three weeks now, commuters have been facing constant delays, cancellations and disruption. That has meant missing out on work and vital time with families. So our three ITV regions have taken this step of tonight, bringing our programmes together for the first time. We'll be speaking to one of Northern Rail's bosses and asking how things are going to change for you. Yes, indeed. We'll also be live across the north to find out how the failures and disruption have been affecting commuters where you live. So what's got us into this situation? Well, three weeks ago, a new timetable was introduced that was meant to bring more frequent and efficient services. It failed spectacularly. Last week, after widespread delays and cancellations, an emergency timetable was rushed in to ease the situation. Its success has been limited. So today there's been a disruption again with reports of trains so crowded that passengers were fainting. Our political correspondent, Daniel Hewitt, is here now on how things got to this point. Across the north of England, the Sunday morning sun of May 20th was meant to be a new dawn on the northern network. A new timetable brought the promise of more trains faster and less crowded. Instead, it was the start of a three-week nightmare for passengers the day Northern Rail became Northern Fail. So, Joe, they're just cancelling them all. Online, it says that they're there. When you get to the train, say, oh, it's just been cancelled. It's so a joke, mate. Got... I've got no idea what's going on, and I don't think anybody at Northern has got any idea of what's going on. It's got to the point now where I'm seriously looking for another job. I mean, it's actually quite impressive that they can make it so awful. Within Northwestern is delayed by approximately 13 minutes. Oh. So how did it get to this? Well, Northern says the new timetable saw a 90% change in its services, but it was not the timetable it had planned for. That's because Network Rail failed to electrify several lines in the northwest of England on time. Northern says it doesn't have enough train drivers for those new routes. That has led to more than 2,600 cancelled journeys and more than 1,600 part cancellations across the north, almost three in four as a result of driver shortages. We are sorry to announce that the 0830 Northern service has been cancelled. Across the rail industry, sorry seems to be the easiest word. We're sorry as Network Rail. We've apologised and I apologise again. We apologise to those passengers. And I'm extremely sorry. The hard bit has been getting them to sort it out. It took ten days of chaos and misery before Northern came up with a plan. On June 1st, it announced an emergency timetable. Its solution to too many cancelled trains was to cancel more trains. In the Lake District, it cancelled all of them. Between Windermere and Oxenholm, the railway lies abandoned for miles. The only rail service into the lakes, replaced by buses. Well, they're getting the impression the Lake District's closed. Exactly what happened when we had the floods. But the reduced timetable did not bring reduced disruption. On day one, there were 280 cancelled or reduced services, prompting the Transport Secretary to announce a public inquiry into Northern's failings. In the case of Northern, I will not hold back from taking appropriate action if the review finds that there has been negligent behaviour. But that wasn't enough to stop the north of England's biggest newspapers sticking in the boot. From the Yorkshire Post to the Sheffield Star, the Liverpool Echo to the Manchester Evening News. On June the 5th, in an unprecedented move, 25 northern titles came together to say, enough is enough. People aren't getting home to see their families at night. They're, they're not getting to jobs. They're losing their jobs. They're losing employment because their bosses don't know whether or not they're going to turn up for work. And today, 71 business leaders and council bosses from northern towns and cities have written to the Prime Minister calling for a guarantee of long-term investment. It is so important for the economy of our region, for the people that live and work here, to have a transport system that we can depend on. And we know um, there's been woeful underinvestment in transport in the north of England for decades now. 
But more than three weeks on, this morning northern cancellations continued. Jake Rayner witnessed a woman collapse on the packed commuter train he catches into Manchester. People shouted up asking for a first aider, as anyone knows, first aider, a doctor on board to come and help her out. There was a doctor on board at the other end of the carriage, but because the carriage was so overcrowded, she couldn't get to the patient, she couldn't get to the woman, so the woman was left in a heap on the floor. Had that been a more severe thing that happened to her, and she needed urgent medical attention, and she physically can't get it. It appears bringing in the chaos under control is still a long way down the line. Well, why are we here and who is to blame? We're joined now by Northern Rail's Regional Director, Sharon Keith. Sharon, we saw in that report that an awful lot of sorries, but that's really not good enough for the passengers affected. It isn't, and, and, and I'm going to say sorry again because I don't think we can say it enough. Uh, we haven't delivered the best service for our customers. We found ourselves in an incredibly difficult situation. We've been working hard over the last seven days, implementing our emergency timetable and reducing the level of cancellation significantly on the northern network but it's still early days but you could have prevented this network rail is saying you could have warned them that you were having these problems and plans could have been put in place I think the important thing to remember is generally for a timetable change it takes about nine months to implement that change as a result of the delay of electrification we found ourselves in the unprecedented situation of having to implement those changes in 12 weeks that caused us some challenges around training our drivers on the appropriate traction the, dr the trains they drive and over the lines of route and that's what's got us into the problem that we're finding today. Can I ask you why your company refused to be interviewed alongside commuters? You're saying sorry but to us but why wouldn't you be interviewed with them so they could put some points to you? That's not something that I was aware of and I've actually been out and about on the network over the last few days. So I was, what to people um, when they say I haven't been able to get to work or I haven't been able to get my kids to school or I haven't been able to get my, my job is losing business, my company's losing uh, money, what would you say to them? I've been saying sorry, I've been explaining the situation we found ourselves in and I've been talking to them about what we're trying to do to put it right and how important we understand those commuters and all of the customers travelling on the network are important. Can I just ask you, is Northern Rail going to benefit financially from this reduced timetable? Not at all. It's not in our best interest and it's not in anybody's best interest to run a reduced timetable. But you're obviously going to be making savings because you're not running as many services. Can that money be put back into the pockets of the passengers who've been so inconvenienced? Uh, we are looking at a compensation package. It's something that we've been working alongside Department for what Transport. What sort of compensation package? Uh, so that's about how we compensate those, compensate those people who've been most severely affected by the disruption over the last few weeks and particularly on those most problematic lines of route. OK, how about Instead of saying sorry, you say we're going to reduce fares for the next six months to say really say sorry. Yeah. Well, we think a compensation package to target those most affected is the appropriate thing, and we've been working with Network Rail and the Department for the Transport on that. All right. OK, okay Sharon, for the moment, thank you very much indeed. We'll hear more from you a little bit later on. Thank you for talking to us so far. Um, at the heart of the problem, though, are the people. Yes, missed job interviews, important meetings, delayed or cancelled, and in the evenings, time lost that should be spent with families. Well, we've been speaking to commuters and businesses in Yorkshire, Cumbria and the North West about how their daily lives have been affected. My name's Catherine McGrath and I'm a freelance marketing consultant. Today I'm going all the way to York, so um, I've got to get to York for a conference, so it's important that it comes on time or else I'm going to miss my connection. This is a typically rubbish train. It's dirty, it's old, it's actually, you can't see this, but it actually smells old and dirty. Our conference starts at half past at York St John University, which means I'm going to have to really run once I get to York. I'm probably not going to get there on time, even if I run all the way. But um, let's see how we get on. But it's just flipping pain in the backside, to be honest. My name is Rob Weatherhead, and I travel to Bromley Cross train station. You can see plenty of space, plenty of seats. If you wait for gets a seat, then there'll be a handful of people get on. Ours will turn up in 10 minutes' time, two carriages, no seats for anyone like that. If I can catch the train at, at 5.44, like I get home around 6.30 and that's absolutely fine. If I have to wait another half, half an hour or even another hour on top of that, then it could be half past seven, by which point I don't get to see my children that evening. There needs to be more investment in the network, more investment in carriages, more investment in, uh, in the infrastructure. 
We are standing on a railway station. It should run railway trains, not buses, not coaches. Thank you all of you. Happy walking. Well, they're just not getting the job done. And there's lots of conflicting stories about why that is. But they're the people I see every day telling me that I can't get a train I need and I can't get a bicycle on the train line and all the other things that are causing me problems at the moment. We've had a huge amount of people saying how frustrated they've been to get here, how difficult it's been to get here. We've had customers phoning us to cancel cruises because they've had to cancel the holidays because they had no other way of getting to us other than public transport. And when they're coming for such a short period of time, they've decided to go to other destinations. Well, the line that should be taking those boat passengers as train passengers to Windermere stands idle tonight, as it has done for days on end. And the station, just a few yards down the tracks at Staveley, here in this corner of the Lake District, the speakers are playing announcements for non-existent trains to non-existent passengers. Not just tourists affected either, people who live here affected too, people like Amanda Seeds. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Rob. Um, what are you having to do because of this? Well, we're moving house. Seriously? Yeah, we are, yeah. Months and months of decision making, but my children rely on the train to get to school. My son is exam age, and I just I can't have the others go through what. And he's you've had them stranded? Totally stranded. Half past nine, half past ten at night, unable to get home. And I don't drive, so I rely on this train line to get them home. Just giving up village life because of that, Amanda. Thank you very much indeed. Lots of people having problems with their jobs, too, wondering if they're going to have to give those up. Tim Farron, uh, the MP for this part of the world, those beyond this part of the world were known better as the former Lib Dem leader. How does this get fixed? Well, the first thing the government needs to do is to take the franchise off Northern. A uh, huge mistake that they made two years ago was to take the franchise of the Lakes Line and the Furness Line over the way there from Transpennine, who are doing a good job, and give it to Northern, who've done a calamitous job ever since. It's worth bearing in mind that, you know, Northern Rail runs services right across North East, North West and Yorkshire. And they say um, if they put this back, that would have a, an impact upon those not just here. Well, no, so it's one, one in five of all of Northern's cancellations have been on this line. But this is the, the gateway to the Lake District, which is Britain's second busy, biggest, biggest visitor destination. But we are to engineering we're, problems, staffing no, problems? Two, two things have gone wrong. One is the government cancelled electrification here, therefore we've got third-rate uh, diesel trains and staff that are not trained uh, to run them. And the other thing is, as I, I already mentioned, they took the franchise uh, off Transpennine, who performed well, and gave it Northern, who were performing badly. And so the first thing they could do, they could do it right today, is to take the franchise off, off Northern and take it over and run it from the Department of Transport. Or at the very least, they could run a shuttle rail service so you have a train line that actually runs some trains. Tim Farron, thank you very much indeed. Yeah, a, a train line that would run some trains uh, seems a, a different concept here tonight with none at all to see. Rob, thanks very much indeed. Now, as part of this special programme where our regions have come together, we cross over to Leeds. It's the busiest train station in the north of England and the third busiest in the UK outside London. Yeah, 50 trains in or out of the city have been cancelled since last Monday. Michael Billington is there for us right now. Michael. Well, Tony, just like in other parts of the north of England, here in Yorkshire, passengers have missed appointments, had written warnings from work, businesses and public services have also been stretched. A whole catalogue of chaos over the last few weeks. And, of course, it's frontline train staff who bear the brunt of frustrations from passengers. Mickey Thompson is from the uh, rail union, the RMT. We know how difficult the last few weeks have been for passengers. What's it been like for your members? Terrible, if I'll be truthful with you. We've had members who have been uh, verbally assaulted and threatened with physical violence. What I would say to the, the watching public here is please understand that the frontline staff can't be accountable for the atrocities that were displayed by the senior officials within the organisation as a result of the timetable change. You've again called today for Arriva Rail North to have the franchise stripped. Uh, you'd like the Transport Secretary Chris Grayling to step aside. Isn't that just a distraction from what commuters really want, which is for somebody to get hold of this problem and sort the mess out? No, you've got to hold those people who are responsible for the mess. Chris Grayling can blame anybody else but himself, so you blame Network Rail, the train operating companies. But the problem lies with him, and we should get a hold of him and address him and his department to make sure that we provide a, a, a reliable railway service going forward. Of course, for some time now you've been involved in this ongoing row with Northern about the role of train guards. There are further strikes scheduled for next week. Doesn't that just make the problem worse? And isn't it time to knock those strikes on the head at least until this problem is sorted out? Unfortunately, from a trade union perspective, I have to disagree. 
Our objective here is to ensure that the travelling public are provided a safe, secure and accessible railway and we will continue, unfortunately, to take action until we force the employer back around the table. What I will say again, while you're travelling, you're, you're viewing public are listening, is the River Rail North need to get around that table with me and find an amicable resolution to this trade dispute. OK, well, further strikes on Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday next week. Further misery then for passengers right across the north of England. Michael, thanks very much indeed. A reminder, you're watching a special edition of ITV's regional news on the rail row across the north. In a moment, we'll be asking how the situation can be resolved. But now it's back to your usuals for the rest of the day's stories. Welcome back to this special edition of ITV Regional News, broadcasting to Calendar, Granada and Look Around with me, Tony Morris, and Christine Tolbert. Yes, we've been hearing about the problems with Northern Rail, but now what about the solutions? Well, we're joined now by John Cridland for Transport for the North. That's a group that champions economic growth through transport links. And by Andy Morgan from Network Rail. Can I start with you first, Andy? Everyone's pointing the finger of blame at you and the disorganisation caused by Network Rail's main maintenance program. Yeah, I think we did have some challenges with um, with the Northwest Electrification Program, which is part of the Great North Rail project. Um, we are overcoming those challenges now, and we have successfully complete um, a good proportion of those schemes, and we are working through to the successful completion of those towards the back end of this year. I'm not sure the viewers would be pleased to hear you saying a good proportion. I think they'd want to know that most of it is done. The Northern Powerhouse promise was faster trains, electrification of lines, less congestion. We're not seeing any of that really at the moment, are we? It, it is a phased approach to, to the infrastructure enhancements. Um, we did electrify between Preston and, and Blackpool um, for the May timetable change, and we are looking to complete the Bolton Corridor, which is from Manchester up to Preston for yeah. December this year. December this year. John Cridland, you, for Transport for the North, put forward a £70 billion proposal for what really needs to be done, the investment that needs to come into the North. Why has it taken this issue to make people sit up and take notice, and is it going to change anything? This issue is about late timetabling of new services, leading to the wrong drivers being in the wrong place with the wrong training. The industry is working very hard to resolve that problem, but having got itself into a real pickle, having bitten off more than it could chew with the timetable, I'm afraid it is taking several weeks to get that right. Transport for the North is standing with the passenger. We're holding Northern and TransPennine to account. Yeah, you're holding Each them to account. Each day we're getting reports you're from holding them, them and telling account. them I'm what sorry they're to getting wrong. You. I'm holding them to account, but you are a, you are a toothless tiger. You don't have the authority to say. But people are saying that you should take over and you know be in charge of running the system here. If you were, why would it be better if you were doing it? The transport operator, Northern, hasn't got the right drive drivers available at the right time in the right place. Whatever regulatory powers we had we can only get Northern to redouble their efforts to reduce the number of cancellations and deliver a timetable that people can rely upon. Andy, can I bring you in here? I mean, it's not just the recent crisis. It's years and years of underinvestment across the whole of the north of England that's seriously affecting our economy. It needs to be sorted out. Yeah, there has been um, historic underinvestment in the rail industry. Um, the Great North Rail Project and our railway upgrade plan is, is, is putting an end to that. There's been a significant and unprecedented amount of investment in the northwest and in the north over the last few years and that will continue for the next two years or so and maybe okay. your chief executive should hand back his cbe for services to the industry that might be a start thank you very much indeed andy and john well daniel hewitt is at stockport station for us now and daniel we heard about the calls from northern leaders to get things resolved what is the political drive behind this well, I think one of the consequences of George Osborne's Northern Powerhouse project was that it effectively handed a big stick to the north of England to beat the uh, government around the head with it. When he spoke about the north acting and speaking as one voice to make the most of its potential, business leaders and council bosses, well, they bought into that. And what they're doing now is they're going back to the government and saying, you made promises to us. You made promises about the Northern Powerhouse and about investment, and you're going to stick to those promises. From the government's perspective, their challenge is to make people in Carlisle and Crewe and the Calder Valley and Hull and everywhere in between think they care as much about northern commuters here as they do about southern commuters. That's the challenge for Joe Johnson, the rail minister, when we asked him earlier what he was doing about this whole mess.
I want to see passengers who've suffered disruption receive the compensation they deserve and, I can, and I'm absolutely determined that that happens. They should get about a month's uh, cash uh, pay uh, to compensate them for the, for the disruption that they've suffered, equivalent to the cost of a month's season ticket. It's worth noting that passengers believe this timetable chaos was the straw that broke the camel's back. They think it was bad before this, and when it's all over, they will not accept going back to a second-class railway system. Dan, thanks very much indeed. Let's bring back in Northern's Regional Director, Sharon Keith, once again. Um, Sharon, where do we go from here? Because although you're saying that the improvements are being made, people are still very unhappy. We had chaos today on the train, so when do we go from here? So I think we have to continue on our programme of stabilising the train service for our customers, giving them confidence that the North is open for business. I think that's incredibly important. I don't think they've, they've got, got that confidence, have they? And we need to give them that confidence, which is why we need to continue with the work that we're doing to stabilise our train plan. We need to get through our programme of driver training and have confidence in reintroducing the service at the end of July. Well, people in the lakes don't have much confidence. Their service has been completely stopped. Other people are offering to run it. Why don't you let them? Uh, it's part of our franchise obligation. We're committed to getting this right. Um, we understand how important the Lakes Line service is, which is why we've really made sure that the, the bus replacement service we've put in there is robust. But people, people are having to pay £40 for a bus service and it, they're paying the same money they pay for the rail service. That can't be right. Uh, that's one of the reasons that we're looking at the compensation offer at the moment and working with Network Rail and the Department for Transport to make sure we, we recompense those customers who are affected. Do you think it is time, as a number of people have said, for Northern to give up the franchise. We're in the third year of a nine-year programme of running this franchise. We're absolutely committed to modernising the rail in the north. We're investing half a billion pounds in new trains, refurbishing our trains. We'll see the Pacers leave this network at the end of 2019. And we want to make the change that a generation hasn't seen yet, and we're committed to doing that. Okay, All right. Sharon Keith from Northern Rail. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, so, two timetables, three weeks of delays and cancellations, hundreds of hours lost and thousands of journeys disrupted. Yes, indeed. That is why we at Calendar Granada and Look Around have come together to bring you a special programme and we will continue to cover this story for you as it continues. Yes, we've heard from a lot of the experts tonight, but what do you think? We'd like to hear from you if you want to contact us out on our networks and let us know what you think. Well, uh, the experts have all been charged with putting it all right, and those passengers stuck on an overcrowded train simply want some answers. But are they going to get them? Be sure to stay with ITV, where Mary has the national and international stories. But for now, from me and Christine and Preston, all of our teams, thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.